I am Evie Lee. I am the STEM Ambassador Coordinator for STEM Ambassador East Midlands. I am also part of the Young Coders team. If you have any questions throughout, please type them down. Let's start. What is the Young Coders Competition? The Young Coders Competition is a UK-wide competition for young people with the coding skills to be crowned Young Coders Crew. It's open for children in UK years 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, or if you're in Scotland, P5, 6, 7 and S1, or if you're in Northern Ireland, years 5, five, six, seven, and eight. If you're not in these age ranges, you will get feedback, but you won't be eligible to win. Children can enter individually or as a team of two to six people. It's an ideal STEM club activity. Children can create a game based on a theme using Scratch to enter. Winners get the prestige of having the Young Coders Crew title for a whole year and a personalised certificate and shield to prove it, plus money for your school. How do the students benefit from taking part? Well, it develops programming skills and promotes creativity. It sparks an interest in computing and coding and builds teamwork, communication, planning and problem solving skills. We think it's very important every entry will receive certificates of participation and feedback from our judges. This year, both the winning UK primary and secondary schools will also receive prize money in the shield. So first prize is £200, second prize is £100 and third prize is £50. And you'll get a nice little shield just like this one here. Following receiving many entries from overseas, and we've been doing this for a couple of years now, there will be a certificate for best international entry and every entry received feedback from the judges. So even if you are overseas, you will still be able to get that with us. Crest Award eligibility, and I've had a lot of emails about this recently. The competition has been assessed as meeting required standards of the British Science Association's Crest Awards. This is a UK-wide thing that you can sign up for. It's discovery level at Key Stage 2 and bronze level at Key Stage 3. Students can gain a nationally recognised certificate of achievement. It encourages participation in the scheme at higher levels in the future and enhances student future UCAS personal statements and CVs. So you might start at discovery level as a younger student and then you'll go up to bronze, there's silver, there's gold and it all ties in with the amount of hours that you put into the project. Discovery level costs £3 per student and bronze level costs £5 per student and Crest grants are available to support and enable schools and organisations to run Crest Awards. So if you're interested, please send me an email or you can look on the website for Crest Awards. The 2024 theme is time and space. So the challenge is to create a game using Scratch to teach other children about time and space. Imagine creating games that let you travel through time, explore distant galaxies, and learn mind-blowing facts about the universe. The more imaginative and out of the world, the better. So this would spark discussions around space exploration, physics, and astronomy topics. What sort of space-related jobs people might have in the future or in the past. Important dates and people in space history. For example, think about the 1969 moon landing. This year's British Science Week theme is time, so we thought it would be good to mix them together so you could start this in March or you could do it around your project in March and it will tie in with the British Science Week. If anyone is interested in linking it with other parts of the national curriculum, I can send over my list that I've gone through. So if you're interested, please send me an email. This is an example from last year and this is on our YouTube channel as well. Let's see an example up close. So this is Aerospace Quest. This was one of our winning games this year. And as you can see, it's received a well done from our official account, first place in the Key Stage 3 category. And you also get added to our winner's studio if you win. So from here, you can see that there's clear notes. There's also sources that have been credited. There are different elements and cloud variables. There are sound sprites. If you look inside, 
you can see that it's quite clear you know there's no spare blocks hanging around or anything like that it's also very important to have a shareable link to it one of the biggest barriers in entering the competition is sharing it there are guides on how to do that and we would like teacher or an adult to submit this sometimes we don't get links that are shareable and we can't contact the teacher or an adult to get that rectified and then a student or a young person can't enter and that's a bit of a shame how is the competition judged well round one every entry is judged by a panel of stem ambassadors for constructive feedback and to highlight the top 20 games these are based on functionality aesthetics and community responsibility what are stem ambassadors they are industry professionals who are all in the uk and in this case they would be people who work in tech and they have volunteered to judge this for us if you need any help with any scratch related problems or if you want to get some industry knowledge from a stem ambassador and you're in the uk go to these links on the side here to do that round two the top 20 games which are from all the stem ambassadors they've chosen their top 20 the top 20 games are then judged by a panel of primary school students at park junior school using the same criteria they are our judges because they won the competition three years in a row once they are now the deciders for first second and third place winners instead of participating and they take their role very seriously as you can see judging criteria and example feedback these are all weighed equally you've got functionality for 33 percent does the game work as intended and is it easy to play does the game include original and well-written code aesthetics 33 percent does the game display correctly and look attractive is the game imaginative and fun to play community responsibility is the game accessible for its target audience e.g is it suitable for a target range of 7 to 13 years we don't want to see bad words blood does it fit a peggy 7 rating and how well does the game address the theme the most common issues are the judge has no context and no coding notes have been included it doesn't fit the theme really really work hard with your young people to make sure that they understand that it needs to fit the theme to be able to score any points in the community responsibility it might work really really well but if it doesn't match time and space it's not going to score very high and we've got examples of what the judges might say when they give their feedback we have a judging criteria summary available in the student support sheet this year we've got extra funding from wcit to update our resources and the ways that you can start to get your students excited about the competition is through assembly slides we've also got an assembly script there's some posters you could print and hang these posters in your classroom or wherever you are or you can have a look on our young coders website check out our website because we have links to our scratch and our youtube channel for students to play or watch past games get them really excited about what they could make resources planning on the project pack we have an overview everything that you need to get ready for teaching or running your code club you can use and it will be here so you've got 12 weeks for complete beginners this includes 10 weeks of session plans and weeks 11 and 12 are included but not linked for short-term excursions or extra time six weeks for those with some scratch experience week six is included but not linked for added flexibility and as i put here it's brand new it's been updated we have some powerpoints that you can go through now we've made sure that they match the national curriculum in the uk and finally keep these documents on hand for help and advice so you've got your student support sheet this is really helpful to have printed out as a little reminder for your young coders so that they know oh this year's time and space or this is what the judges are looking for you've got teacher faqs so you've got just a link towards frequently asked questions or we've got our frequently asked questions on our website as well to quickly look for questions that we might have answered we've also got a glossary so any words that are in italics and bold throughout the project pack that you're not quite sure about or your young people want some more information on it will be explained in the glossary any questions this is question time let's see if we've got any questions in the chat the first one is around is it just schools that can win the main prize or could clubs community groups things like that win or is the money kind of associated purely for a school-based group the prize money would only be going to the school of where the child goes so if the child goes to x school x school will be given that money to help and to be given to those so what you do is some schools they've given it as a gift card to their student or sometimes it will help the technology that the school has it helps to go towards that kind of resources and funding but at the moment we can't give it to clubs or individuals a few people have asked for the curriculum link list that you mentioned so if anybody else wants that we will send it out 
What is the link to the winning submission studio? I will put that in the notes of this presentation. Our scratch is Young Coders Comp Studios I Create, and it was Young Coders Winners with an exclamation mark. When you say time for the theme, do you mean history or clocks? It's really up to your students and how they kind of perceive that, but I would say time and space. So thinking about different ways that time can be used within space or what jobs they might have in the future that are space related. We could have space vets. We're going to need space lawyers one day. Or you could think about important dates and people in space history. So 1969, we had the moon landing. And in 2025, I think we're going to be having another moon landing where the first female will be on the moon. How exciting is that? So it's really kind of how you perceive it. And we get a lot of different games where you wouldn't even think about what they've come up with, but it's absolutely brilliant. It's really up to you. Whatever your students can come up with, as long as they can justify it, that's absolutely fine. We would encourage to be as creative as you can. Group size. So group sizes would be two to six people in a team, or you can join as an individual as well. It's better if you want to encourage teamwork and all those kind of soft skills to go in as a group. Can I check again on the prior certificates for international submissions? International submissions, they will get a certificate, feedback, and they will also get recognized. They're also invited to the celebration event, depending on time zones and that. Are local STEM ambassadors able to come in to school to help introduce the competition? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. If you wanted to submit an activity request, we have our assembly slides that they can use and they are here to help if you want technical help with Scratch. If you need any other support or if you've got any other questions, at the bottom we've had our social medias. They are all linked and you'll be able to click on them or you can go onto a website and find our social medias. We've recently opened up a Facebook group between ambassadors and educators. So if you want to be able to talk to each other, kind of see what everyone else is doing, join that and you can and get any support and questions through all of our other social medias. Good luck! Submit your entries by the deadline on the Friday the 10th of May 2024. So individual entries will need to complete the competition submission form or multiple entries you can use the multiple entry form. On there there's a YouTube video explaining how to do it if you need some extra help and they will need to be sent to me before Friday 10th of May. To register your interest if you've not already and receive regular updates check out our website. Go and register. If you need some help getting back on I can send you a PDF copy as well. If you need any further guidance or are having issues with the resources, please email me. I'm happy to help. If you need an industry professional and you're the East Midlands, I can point you in the right direction with our STEM ambassadors. So good luck, everybody, and happy coding!